not ever. Hi, my love. Hi. I want to say to the listener, you know, I usually have my my guest, I press record right before the minute they come on the screen because I don't like anybody to miss the conversation. And our conversation was a little, not boring to you, but we were just catching up on our yeah. lives. But yeah. I bet you we end up talking about some of it on the podcast today because I actually think there's very, you know, when I think about what you're craving, I think about the idea that you and I both moved out of major metropolitan cities and we are metropolitan gals and yes, really being able to tap in and listen to that wisdom is yeah. brave. You're brave. Well, I mean, you're so brave. You're, you're so brave. Says it takes one to see one girl. Like, like if look you have, if it feels indicated today, this is what I was thinking about in the shower this morning. Can you, I don't know if it's going to match in, but somewhere, can we tell the story about when you coach the guy that gets hit by a car and about the subconscious? It never leaves my mind. Wow. Sophie, you remember that. Yeah. Literally it, it embedded in my brain. Wow. Because I think sabotage is so fascinating as a therapist. Yeah. Yes. And the yeah. story. Okay, fine. Let's just tell it. And then we'll get to the back end of what we're doing. Tell yeah. the story. I'm coaching this guy who wants to write a book. He wants to write a book and then he doesn't resolve the reason why he hasn't written the book yet, right? So he's afraid of being seen and he's afraid of being compared to the older brother. He should have done it first and whatever story he's telling himself and he's on his way to sign the contract and he hits get like bad accident, broke both of his legs, never goes back to write the book, which some people, are like, you know, maybe it, it just, it was coincidental. And I'm like, maybe, but you can write a book when your legs are broken. This isn't so you don't write books with your legs. So you could have continued the journey and you didn't because you never resolved. You just never resolved these pools. You know, we have these pools. Like I used to be, as you know, 350 pounds. And I had this thing of, I want to be thinner. I want to be healthier. I want to be, blah, blah, blah. But meanwhile, I'm having this conversation about how dangerous it's going to be for mm. me to be thin and to be sexy and to be exposed and to be blah, blah. And so I don't do it. I mean, I, I try it, but it's like almost like there's a part of me that's saving me and, and trying to actually protect me. Because if I believe that being thinner is going to cause me to be in danger, I'm not doing it, right? Like I just keep, this year well, there's the whole right? podcast i guess we can stop now all right goodbye um, <laughs> saying thank you for being on the show um <laughs> i love that story because i think yes i mean i think this subconscious beliefs that we have right he finally gets the book deal and then effectively tries to kill himself yeah. subconsciously and and still can't even yeah. it's this little book of short stories that i don't know if you ever published but man i loved every single one sophie and i our friends, because we went on a writing retreat together, a week long writing retreat, sat next to each other. We just fell pretty madly. I fell madly in love with you. I, I fell madly in love with okay, you. Okay, good. Phew. Yes. I guess this is not the day. It's not really, I didn't give you an opportunity to say like, yeah, actually the feeling wasn't mutual, but I think it's true. <laughs> let's you talk know, about your 350 pounds. Tell us all about you, but let's make sure, I want to come back to all of this sabotage because I'm sure everybody listening here is like, please don't just tell me all of this and what do I do about it? So let's, let's get through it, girl. Well, which part? The how do I get through the sabotage, or how do I tell us a little back? bit about you? Make sure you get to three hundred fifty pounds on on my podcast somewhere. Well, <laughs> I am French, which, as you probably know, being three hundred fifty pounds in France is like being nine hundred somewhere else because everybody's walking <laughs> around like on stick it's legs. Three X. Right? <laughs> exactly. Oh, Very much funny so. at the time. It's true. At the time, you know, there's no clothing stores. There's no whatever the brands are now, you know, that you can find clothes. It's like, oh, I have my one so pair. Lucky. I know, I know. One pair of pants where literally we had to buy two so my mom could sew, you know, so it could be my size, you know, and it's the one pair that I wash at night because, you know, I need it for tomorrow. So not an easy time to be a larger person in France. How old were you? How many years ago was that? It started, you know, it started when I was 10. I, I, uh, there was a, re there's a recorded 40 pounds that was gained when I was 10 years old, which mm -hmm. on a little 10 year old person is a lot. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, my, the person who raised me really, which was not really my, my mom, this Spanish adorable lady, um, Julia, who fed me beautifully. And I was a very thin kid. And when she died, she died of cancer that took away her body forget her weight it just went down from like being this chubby gorgeous spanish you know hugs you and you feel all the curves you know to like this bone like oh, wow. stick figure and she died and so 
all along she had said, you know, healthy babies are big babies, you know, and I was like, oh, she's right. Like, oh my God, she got all skinny and she died, you know? So I think it imprinted there. At least. Yeah. And she's your feeder. I mean, forget it. She was my feeder. And turns out years later in therapy, it turns out she wasn't as, I mean, she was loving her. She was more loving than a lot of what was going on around me. But she was still, there was like this whole story about mastica, which means like chew. And if you mastica, mastica, like we're having dinner and I don't want so much food and I'm asked to mastica anyway and eat uh -huh. more. And if I don't finish my plate, I'm being put in this like really cold and dark room. Wow. So it was loving, but you know, it was caring, but it was a little bit like it was, it was at the time, you know, it's like I was a kid of the, you know, you finish your plate, you know, like right. my family had gone to war and starved and, you know, whatever. Well, and withhold story. and withhold, you, you had love withheld if you didn't finish your plate. Oh, entirely. And, and she would just, yes, she, my parents, my parents were more, we've gone to war. You better not, you know, waste food, which I've always thought about like, wait, if I eat it and it hurts me, isn't it a waste as well? Oh, like, come on now. More? <laughs> this is one nugget after the next. We're like six minutes in. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so you know yes i'm in paris i'm i'm very large i i'm very miserable for that reason and other reasons and there's this one window I'm like 24 and i'm dating this absolute bozo and the job and the i need to get a new car and i'm like you know what now now like go like now and i hopped on a plane and i moved to the states which the cute story is I was maybe 19 and I bought a pair of Nikes. That tells you when I was 19 because there was no Nike store to be found in Europe. And so I'm buying a pair of Nike in, in America, you know, and then a t-shirt that said UCLA, which was UCLA, but in France, you know, it was like UCLA, <laughs> <laughs> UCLA t-shirt. And, and I'm back in Paris and there's this pair of Nikes at the bottom of my closet. And I'm like one day and I don't wear them. I never wear them. But on that day, like I'm on my way to the airport and I just lace these shoes, man, like, like, whoa, like it's my wings mm -hmm. and I'm going, you know, and I moved to LA. I had a friend who hosted me for two weeks. She said she would leave me uh, the apartment for two weeks. And then I was kind of like, okay, now what? Because my parents weren't exactly happy. It wasn't, yay, we're supporting you, go, you know, I was supposed to take over my father's business and all sorts of plans that were not my plans, but mm -hmm. They were plans made for me. Mm -hmm. And so I left and I, I made my way, you know, as when you're in the right place, you, you just align, things kept aligning, you know, a job and a, and a boyfriend who had a house and he had to travel and left me the house. <laughs> just, like, just miracles after miracles and pounds and pounds and pounds that led me to the 350. I think I was maybe 290 when I moved mm -hmm. and then I gained another few. And then, you know, as you know, the journey, I, I broke up. Wait, so did you gain that weight? Do you think emotionally or excitedly or? I don't think you get, I don't know. I don't, I think I to know, get to you. that level, it's not a little too much salad, you know, like there's. Well, definitely... I, I was thinking also that like with the Nikes, like, oh, I, I need to try this and I need to try this and I need to, I'm in America, but no. No, I think a lot of it was, I don't know how to feel my feelings. Yeah. Oh, I'm sad. Let's eat. Oh, I'm angry. So if I'm sad, I eat Nutella. If I'm really angry, I eat, you know, chips. Right. Um, and then I, you know, I do the usual, you know, so suspects, you know, I do, I take pills to lose the weight. And then of course I regain all the weight and then I'm crying a lot. And then I want to be loved for my soul, not my body. And so I stand in the fact that, you know, being large is good, but meanwhile, my knees are really hurting and, you know, I'm not, I'm not happy in, in a body that I can't be on a plane comfortably. I can't, you know, you know, the story, like there is that one story I'm on a plane and this woman brings me the extra belt. And the extra belt doesn't do. Mm. And, and and the people around are annoyed because they're late and they want to get on that plane. And um, I have to leave the plane. I can't be oh, on the plane. Man. And it's just like, uh, like, oh, wow, that's a whole different level. So I can't, I mean, I'm really happy when people support themselves and love themselves in whatever weight. I mean, I'm totally of that generation. Yeah. And my body wasn't very happy. You know, it was just, it was heavy and it was, it was hard on my there was a picture I was shown of apparently the, the most, the heaviest person recorded. And it's like this round, very round person, but his, there's, it's an x-ray and his body, his bones are the same as, it's not like your bones right. go with the extra weight, right? And so I just saw these little ankles 
bones, you know, this is big. And I was just like, oh, my ankles, what, what, what am I doing to my ankles? You know, so it was a journey. Like it was a journey of love. You know, it was a journey of self-destruction for me, like because there was a lot of other things, three packs a day and sex with people I don't know and just all sorts of just very destructive behaviors. It wasn't just, you know, the food. The food was, if anything, the food was maybe the least destructive, you know, in those. Well, in, in a way protective. I mean, what you're saying in the beginning, like that's your nurturing and your nourishment. And of yeah. course you might be doing it in a way that's destructive, but also in a way that's protective. That's why it's so complicated, right? Yeah, it is. It is. And I was safer, you know, I was raised in a household where boundaries were messed up, you know, and, and looking as a larger body woman, man looks a little more like, you know, there's less going on uh, the and androgyny I think, the, god that's interesting yeah right like super skinny and super overweight it looks right like if you see two people walking and it's two skinny people they could be you so know either true. one right yeah yeah that's fascinating to move yourself to be more androgynous so that you're safer yeah you're less sexy you're less less right. sexy not as in some people are very attracted uh, actually when i gained all this weight i ended up in a crowd of Right. And that were very overweight and men who wanted that. And that became another, huh? So now I'm loved because of that. That's mm. not what I that want confusing. either. Yeah. That must have been confusing to you. So confusing. It's yeah. so confusing. Yeah. Then what? And then what happened? Then I, I'm middle of the night. I have a daughter. The conversation having a daughter changes a lot in my head. Mm. Like, wow, I would like her to feel healthy and I would like her to enjoy moving her body. Like I come from a intellectual, you know, smart kids read, you know, we don't sweat or around the whatever, right? So I I raise her to feel comfortable in her body and therefore am I comfortable in mine? Wow. And therefore, you know, is my body, my body at the time I would say was more of a, uh, like a vehicle for my head a little bit. I was smart. I was like, hey, I, I have that. So let's like, just take me places. But it wasn't now I play pickleball and I eat healthy and I, I have this relationship with like, oh, this feels good. It feels good to be in here, you know, which in before would have been like something happens between there and there. And I, yeah, something you know, we're on a podcast. So something happens below the neck and something happens above the neck. And it's the great desire to have the match. You know, one of my Spiritual teacher says that the throat chakra is the chakra of addiction because the heart is saying something and the head is saying something and they're not communicating. Oh, powerful. Yeah. Yes. The famous 18 inches between our head and our hearts. That Absolutely. would be the, the longest journey we'll ever take. Yeah, that's right. So then I'm in the refrigerator, which I would do at night. Like I'm literally open the refrigerator, pull up a chair and eat everything in sight. I mean, the most memorable slash disgusting is Nutella with mayo. Mm -hmm. Cause might as well, you know, make it even more fat, fattening. Right. Yes. Um, and that one night I'm in front of the refrigerator about to do my, you know, my damage and I hear and I still to this day I'm not sure you know where does it come from where does inspiration come from I'm still not completely convinced but I did hear you can eat everything in sight but first feel what you're feeling right now and I'm like oh what <laughs> who is that what is that and so I but I take it you know I take it seriously and so I close the refrigerator after a few minutes because it was cold and you know, the light was not super pleasant from the fridge. And so I sit on the corner of the kitchen and I'm just, oh, did I feel, oh, Molly, it was just like maybe, maybe three weeks. I mean, maybe 30 minutes. I don't know, but it was just cry and angry and, and, wow. and yell. And there was no one at the house. And I just remember this, like, oh, I can still feel, I can just choke thinking about how yeah. this desperation and this loneliness. And it was just where I'm not even that. I feel happy ish, you know, it was, it was just, <laughs> your soul was like, no, you don't. <laughs> oh, you really don't. You really don't. At least my happy was, was dwarfed. You know, my happy was just like, I can have moments, you know, this feels really, I had a child, you know, this is incredibly beautiful. And, but they were these like pockets of unresolved, you know, from my past. And, oh, I think I may have felt them all that night. It just, yeah. I sat there and sobbed. And then, then there was like, okay, now you can go have your Nutella and go, you know, and it was just like, no, nope, not interested. And that was kind of the end. That was kind of the breaking up. That was the, there was definitely this phase of, 
disgust with it all, which was not super loving. It was another kind of self-attack, you know, like, how could you do that? And how did you, because once I woke up to like, oh my God, my body. Okay. So when I was 19, a dear, dear friend of mine dropped dead of an aneurysm. Mm -hmm. Like she bended over to grab something and basically never stood back up. And there was, that was already like a breakthrough for me of like, oh, you mean it can end just like that? Like, just like that. And so there was a moment of like, all right, well, you could keep going with the extra food, extra cigarettes, extra. I didn't do alcohol. I got drunk when I was young and that was kind of like, okay, I'm done with that. Mm -hmm. But everything else, you know, just Paris, you know, imagine Paris in the seventies, you know, just like go for it. And that was definitely a moment of like looking at the mirror and being like, all right, so you keep going. That's where you're going. You know, you'll, you'll drop dead somewhere Mm -hmm. or you'll find yourself with a needle up your arm somewhere in, you know, a I don't know, a whorehouse in Holland and, or you'd make a turn. And so the turn of self caring had started, you know, when I was already in my early twenties. Um, so important to say that though, like these seeds get planted and then they bloom. It's not like these, it, it, and, and then they bloom. It's not like the seed gets planted and it blooms. No. That's why no, I say you water. never stop trying. Right, you you water, water the thing. There's a, I don't even know if it's true, but there's this tale in the self-help world of this African tree, apparently, which you water, you water, you water, you water, nothing, nothing. And you just keep watering because, and then one day there's a tree. It's That's just, your story. It's like, it's, it's a little bit. It's like, <laughs> there's like all these little things. And one day you're like, no more Nutella. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. No more Nutella. I did new Nutella maybe 25 years later (laughs) again, which was my cat died. And I was so incredibly sad. And I was just like, I don't know. I don't know where to put that. I don't know how to feel that sad. So I was like, okay, well for that deliberately I could do, you know, and I did three days of like incredible large jars of Nutella, which of course made me like throw up. I just think that is such a fascinating story as a therapist. Cause that's like, you went back to the the primal food that you knew. But I did it consciously. That was the difference. I did it with like, I'm so sad. I know that if I, because it does, right? Like when we do the sugar, we do the hit of something. It'll numb you out. It calms you down. It calms down the angles. No question. And same thing when people, you know, I think that when people relapse, there are really conscious things that are saying, I know this with with AA and alcohol. It's like, I just need it out. And I, and I didn't feel like any of those other skills were going to work. And I, and I dialectically understand that. Like I get, I really get that feeling and, you know, sometimes we have to do that. That's the path. I think, I think for me, the shift was the length of time. Like before I would be like, well, now I effed up. So I might as well do that for three right. months or three years. Right. You know, I, I, I don't do that. Like, I don't even call it relapse uh, to me once in a while. Oh, I, I go either. visit. Yeah. I visit a place that I don't live in anymore, which is. I think when you call it relapse, you can't be in a relationship with food and you need to be in a relationship with food. Yeah. I mean, it is. I'm sure you, your audience have heard that too, but it's like, we, we don't, we have to take the tiger out every meal. Like That's I don't. Right. I don't, I don't, I never was able to, the sugar for me is more in the vicinity of a drug. It's like, a, like people are, you know, it's your birthday. You should have some cake. I'm like, I don't do heroin on my birthday. Like I don't, that to me, it's not a Absolutely. reward. It is not a treat. And if anything, it's a punishment because then I'll feel miserable in my mm-hmm. body. So mm-hmm. that is not a treat at all. But the, the, you know, the occasional bread or I don't, I eat pretty healthy. I eat keto, you know, it's, it's, it fits me well. I don't recommend it to everyone. I'm just, to me, that's the rhythm that works really well. But once in a while, there's delicious pasta or something passes by and I'm like, yeah, yep. try that. <laughs> I mean, gosh, this is like the most diet culture question I'll ever ask in the history of my life, I hope. But I think everybody's just like, well, how did you lose the weight? <laughs> You know, it, everyone it was- wants the secret because you have, if you're not watching this on YouTube, she's like a, you know, normal weighted person. So, you know, how the hell? Yeah, it's, you know, I, I do. So originally it was very dramatic because I quit all the substances, you know, all the sugar dishes and the pot. Like at first I really did. I, I my friend Gay Hendrix, we joke about how we had the same Your technique, which Gay was. Gay Hendrix, I Yes, I know, but he's, you're so you know, he's lucky. Lost. Well, I just want to say everybody should just read his book because it's the most amazing book. You should read the book. And I'd love to just on the side, I'd love to have him on the show with you because he's lost. He used to be like, oh, I know know. he's amazing. He's an amazing human. He really is an amazing human. But we often talk. Let's (laughs) we talk about we started eating the stuff that the opposite of whatever we would eat before. 
like instead of Nutella, I'd be like, oh, how about fruit? Or, right. You know, that's a really, that's, that's such a basically perfect way to think about it. What is well, the opposite like, of self-harm? Self-love. What's the opposite of self-harming food? Okay, I'll eat that. Exactly. And it yeah. worked, you know, the first few pounds were like the first 20, 30, which, you know, when you have 200 to lose yeah, or totally. one to drop, um, it's, it's a lot, but it's also not a lot, you know, it's an underhand are... pitch. Totally. Exactly. I mean, it's not an underhand pitch because I have to go through detox and blah, 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 blah. But the gimme yes. weight, your weight, your body does not want to weigh that much. That's what we know no, for sure. No, no, no. And it's, it's, it, it really, it, it hurts when you get out of the couch, you know, and people would be like, why don't you work out? It's like, well, I don't know. Walking for me is working out. You know, <laughs> exactly. just like, I, I move myself from one side of the room to the other. I remember other. my mom's like, let's go for a walk. And I remember getting to the first quarter mile and thinking my lower back was going to fall out of oh, my body. Exactly. I literally, you like, know, I was like, I don't, I, I might die here. And I mean, I'm not saying that in a funny way. Like, at 325 pounds, that walk was too much. I don't even understand how how morbidly obese people walk. I mean, it's so painful. I guess you just get used to that pain, but I couldn't. I couldn't get used to that pain. It's funny because I did. I recorded um an, an, like an interview with a friend of mine who is very overweight, and I was aware of how much he had to negotiate to be able to come to the interview. Like, where will I park? Is there is there an elevator? Will I have to go up? Like, she had to negotiate. Is the hallway a place where I can hold on to the walls? Because it's really hard for me to walk. And that was that was one of the, like, wow. Like, I forget how much we get we that pain. And I get that pain. And I get that. Um, I have to say, for everybody listening, I actually really, you know, denial is a protective mechanism of the mind. And so yeah. to not be able to, I mean, I remember that, like, I wasn't wearing underwear anymore, not because I was yeah. pro no underwear, because I, I could, my mind couldn't make it to think of how I would get underwear that I was, had done, had gained so much weight that I couldn't find underwear because the same time frame as you, like I just shut down. That's what our brains do. They shut down and, and is, they adapt. It is, it is pretty poetic how, like now I look back with so much tenderness mm. with how did I deal? Like I come to a party and I don't want to sit down because I've not tested the chairs and there's a good chance I would fall off because it's going to break. Yeah. And so managing the standing the whole time, but then it's exhausting to stand. And so how do I manage to find a place where I can butt against the thing so it supports me or whatever? Like the amount- that's funny, stuff because that's so the story of addiction, right? It's like managing your use. But we're not talking about use, we're talking about large body. Like it's so interesting, right? It is. I mean, I would, I, I, I would describe for me, it was definitely the way I would go buy my jars- steal oh. a little bit of money, yeah, me you know, too. meet the guy in the back of the store so he can hand me the thing that nobody knows that I'm doing it every day yeah. as a child, you know, and it, it is, it, it very much reminded me of someone who like, you watch a movie about drug yeah, deals yeah. and it's like, huh. Or leaving you your know. kids at home to go get the drugs. Sure. Absolutely. It all makes sense. Wait, so yeah. it was just the opposite. You just the opposite. Is that it? That's what I did. I mean, you know, to lose, I, I've lost about 180 pounds, which yeah. you can't do in one way. Like, and I don't think you, right. I don't think you do that just by doing the opposite. I just want to say that's everything me too. No, you know, so there's the opposite and then there's keto. And then I did some HCG in the middle there because I did the metabolism I thought was appealing. And I did stay down there again. I actually did it at the same time. And we were both like, this is nice, you know, to kind of get your body to be a little less hungry. HCG, I don't... which is growth hormone. It's it's a it's actually uh, oh HGH I'm sorry HGH oh interesting that I said that <clears throat> yeah I did do HGH like uh, one round and I lost like forty pounds you know which the well, effort that's very it, similar to what's going on right now with the Ozempic and all the injectables it's actually very similar to what's happening in the world yeah we which, cycle we cycle we cycle here it's like it's like in fashion you know yep we exactly. the, the bell bottoms the bell, bell bottoms, bottoms are, back. are back injectables are back. <laughs> I'm excited about bell bottoms personally, but injectables, we'll see no, what goes on there. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see on it how it lasts. You know, those it, it was a good Kickstarter for me. Like, you know, I was, well, you're, I was I think you're the kind of person that I think I actually have a lot of patients who I think they're made for it. And I think there's a lot of people who are thinking it's a magic pill. Yeah. No, there's no magic pill in this whole thing. Other than the magic is I wake up, I breathe, I have friends, I love, I'm happy, I can laugh. That's the magic. Like, do that. Do That's more of really that. true about you. I really know that about you. You are really, you're someone who really does their work in order to maintain the integrity and the creativity that you bring to this world. I mean, I don't, I, does it work without doing some no, of it? No, it doesn't. No. Not long-term. That's the whole point. No, my, I was just in a uh, therapy. I was being a therapist before this. And my client said to me, 
well, my friend, you know, my friend, da, 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 and she's a social worker. So she should be, da, da, da. I was like, oh, no, no, no. We're more fucked up than anybody. And no. she said, well, you're not. And I said, do you know what I do to make sure that I'm not screwed up to treat you? It's, ex- you know, it's a lot. So we it's are in therapy. Lot. I said, I'm in a lot of therapy. Like, of course I am. What yeah. else is there to do in this world? You know, but yeah. find that space of where I want to be sitting and how I want to be giving to this world. It's the whole point. In case anyway, It wondering. is interesting how people don't see working on themselves as, as much of a project as starting a company, writing a book. It's, it's <laughs> right. like, I take care. I take care of this thing. I take care of my thoughts. I take care of, that was the other answer to what you asked earlier, there was a lot of work to this emotional world, you know, yeah. that was, that was imagining that being 350 pounds was safer than not, you know, that it doesn't come from, oh, I'll just try it out. You know, it's, it's a, it's a long history of familial, you know, just complicated interactions and lack of support and lack of feeling seen for who I truly was. And, but then it's like, it's a blessing too, because now I've done the work to do that with myself for myself, you know, so oh, it's, it yeah. becomes, and once in a while, there's this, like this weekend, we had this big event here and I found myself like judging myself and doing some funny thing. I don't do very much anymore. And I was like, huh, there you are. Oh, I haven't seen you in a while. I mean, I, I, I embraced her, you know, I, I took That's care of her and I, by the way, right. Yeah. And I, and I took a bath and I spoke to her and I, to her being my inner child probably you know just I don't really relate to her as a little girl but there was definitely this kind of like oh like okay okay like I would do to you I would do with a friend you know like I would be able to be like what's come here like let's let's have a hug let's hug this out right so self-love is all and it was a big shift for me to realize one day that every bite as much as every bite was a destructive bite before it became like every bite is actually an act of self-love like this thing I'm eating right now feels good in my body, gives me energy, yeah. makes my skin look bright and, and shiny and my hair, you know, long and Hard healthy. To get to that point when you're, um, I, cause I was actually thinking about, I think I was four years into eating disorder recovery where I said to myself, where it started to occur to me that maybe eating an organic apple was an act of self-love versus a different, like I couldn't, nothing mattered to me except for being yeah. thin. Yeah. And yeah. then when I moved more into treating my emotions and my spirit, then these things started to occur to me like, oh, you know what? Eating these greens is helpful for my gut. I didn't get, yeah. I couldn't have cared less. I had been like, I will eat dog food for my life if you tell me I can be thin. And then I realized when I got thin, I was still miserable. <laughs> and then I gained all the weight back because I was miserable and I thought it was a quick yeah. fix and I had so much more work to do. Yeah. And now I can start to see like, oh, you know what? Putting those sprouts on that Ezekiel bread, it makes you feel different than if you're just eating American cheese all day, which I love American cheese. I need to say that. I mean, that's just my own problem in life. But uh, I hear everything you're saying. It's just, I want to say to the listener, like, again, like open your mind to the idea of what we're talking about. We are both recovering morbidly obese people and you can get there. Try not to be like, oh, good for them. Oh, no, 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 not no, us. no, no, no. And I actually, funny enough, I was doing a speech not long ago and this woman, and I didn't mention the weight because it's not, I don't necessarily talk about it if it doesn't, if it's not relevant to the conversation. So it didn't come up and she didn't know. And she came at the end and she was all like, you don't like, she gave me the, you know, you, okay. the finger up, like, you know, you don't understand. And I was like, honey, let's sit for a moment. Let me tell you a little <laughs> bit about <laughs> this journey over here. And she was just like wide eyed, you know, kind of like, and you could be where you are now. And I was like, yes, the way you right. repaint a house, it's work. Mm. You don't come home and it's like, okay, the walls are repainted. No, you gotta, you know, you gotta do the work. And so you don't understand word- is probably my greatest defense mechanism that I ever used through all of my addictions. I, it was the way that I got myself out of healing and stayed small. I'm like, oh. they, they, my story is different. You can't understand. You can't understand. Yes. It was my, what probably the thing that kept me sick for as long as I, I really abided by that. Like there's no one who can understand me, which is my own trauma too. I mean, we do. That's the thing. We all have the trauma. And one of my dearest therapists, when I was very young, said that was probably the seed. Talk about a seed of healing. She said, "At least you're honest. 
you showing me your pain. A lot of people, they just like, you know, smoke like chimneys and they do all these very destructive behaviors behind closed doors. I can see yours. You're vulnerable. You're showing it to me. And I just went, oh, <laughs> like this is that. not, I'm not, I'm not my own enemy. I'm not, you know, I'm being courageous. It is courageous in this world where all that matters is to look a certain way to some people, certainly not to all, thank God. Thank God. But there, there, we really are in a culture of, and if, you know, in our obesity, a hundred years ago, we would have been, you know, the top models. And it's like, well, I just was born, was I born the wrong day, the wrong century? So walk me through, I want to talk about what you're doing right now, because it seems so interesting. And, um, but you're so interesting, which is sort of the problem on an hour long podcast. Um <laughs> But, and then you, like, cause I want everyone to understand, like you have, you have such a breadth of in- interesting training and you were a coach for a while and you started so many businesses, like, and what, what are you, how are you, how have you landed to what you're up to now? That's like, be current. I love the stuff you're doing. It's so interesting. So the, the, the end point, well, the moment point, maybe not the end, but the current point. Right. <laughs> she's, I mean, work. if you're friends with her, she's always doing something like amazing and you can't like, and it's just one of 10 million things she's doing and done. It's amazing. My brother is always like, when we start a phone call, he's always like, so what life are you in now? Like you know, last like, week. <laughs> is this, is this CB current? You're like, no, five things happened since then. <laughs> it's but so that's what it is week. to be awake. So, right. It is. And it's also, it's also living life from a place of, does this bring me joy? Mm. You know, is this, is this potentially, I mean, it doesn't mean quit everything right away. If it's difficult by any means, I work hard, but there's definitely like, is this, does this have the potential to truly turn me on? Cause otherwise, you know, I've, I've, I've done too much to stay in something that turns off my lights, you know, and that's not happening. So I have run many companies. I've had teams, I've had groups of people, I've had, I've run nonprofits. I've just done a good amount of like stuff with people. And I've often been um, surprised, curious, excited, a little um, sad that some people have really good ideas and they can't seem to get them executed. Like Mm -hmm. they'll come up with a great idea for a book and then somehow 10 years later, I'm writing this book and they still haven't written the book. And I know certainly from your story, one can write a book and do get it done when it's time. Right. So how do we line our belief in some, I know that was not me. I mean, I have to just say spiritually, like nobody (laughs) writes a book in 90 days who isn't connected to something bigger. That was written. Of course you're connected to something. That's what breathes you, of course. And some people don't believe that they are. And so they're doing the hard work and it's not going anywhere because they haven't resolved this sabotage thing we talked about at the beginning of the show. And so how do, where is that gap between I want this and I don't have it? Mm. And I don't want, I don't want to go to the Olympics. You know, the, the wants I have match what I think my life is meant to be. Like, I don't have a desire to go upside down, you know, and be seen by a mazillion people on TV for the span of a whole summer and then be done, right? Like, that's not, but that wasn't born to be that. You know, I was born to be of service and deliver content that really helps people and come up with like methodologies that help people go from what they want to, you know, where they have it. And so that's what this is. Be current is, and I love the notion of being current for a million reasons, like the current. This is electricity. Like you and I are connected by current right now, right? Yeah. So there's the current and then there's the current with water, which is the, the momentum you gain when the water just, you know, picks up speed. It's called the current. And and then of course, being current is where you look everywhere. That's my ideal house. I look everywhere and everywhere I look, there's like, oh, that makes me happy. Oh, mm-hmm. that corner brings me joy, right? So it's it exists physically, but of course it exists inside your head. And so the methodology uh, invites people to make sure that what lives, you know, between the other seven inches or so, you know, between our ears, make sure that what's going on up there is what we want to be going on, you know, not overwhelmed. Shit, I forgot to do this. And I forgot to call so-and-so and and I didn't pick up the thing. And we shouldn't be bogged down by the practical like that. And so to have a system that captures that the same way we have, I don't know, a refrigerator that captures the food when we come back from the supermarket, you know, our thoughts should have a container that we trust. So that's what this teaches people. It teaches people to build a container where every thought you have, whether it's, you know, something you wish you could do or something you're doing or something you have to do or something you do one day, all of it, it finds a home. So you see it when you need to see it and it's not floating in your head. Uh, How do we go about doing that? Like, is it an app? Like, how do, is it just a thought process? Like, how do we go about, that's really wonderful. 
Yes to all those things. It's not exactly an app yet, although I do use Trello, which is the 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 project management tool that I find the simplest. We can do it on paper, but I find it practical and pretty and easy. And so I teach people on Trello. So I do a bunch of groups and I and I'm writing a book and I do one-on-ones with executives and I bring it to companies. And but it starts from that same think about the body and being current. Talk about that. It's yeah. like just feeding it what it needs and feeding it what it wants. You know, it's it's like a world of like, I don't need to finish my plate. Who said that? That's not what's current. I'm no longer hungry, right? Wow. Like I had, my mother was raised in the concentration camp, you know, sort in reality. And so she will, she, I mean, her plate does not need to be washed. It's like, it's just, she will go into this day. <laughs> right. And I don't, it's like, if I'm not hungry, I'm done. Like there's no, if you get pleased by me eating food, I don't need, we're not friends. We're not family. We're not friends. We're not anything. Well, like I don't not loving because I'm officially doing loving. something that is unkind to myself. And you, if you want to be a part of that, you shouldn't be in my life. And if you, you want to, I want you, I need you to support that. I am done. Yes. Mm-hmm. the same way I support you. Like if it's important for you to finish your plate, by all means, finish your plate. Like yeah. don't make me do that to make you feel like, you know, you are contributing somehow I contribute more if what I eat is current and and fits my my need for how, nutrients. How do you say that? You know, I just had a I was a very quick relationship, and I decided I really needed to spend some time alone right now. And I said that to him. I said, "Listen, I'm just recognizing I really need some time by myself, and it's not about you; it's about me." Blah 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 blah. And this is what he said back to me. I said, "Well, on one hand, I hear you. I on one hand, I want to support you. On the other hand, you know, I want to talk about this thing." And I stopped him and I said, "I'm so sorry. This isn't not a negotiation. I'm not actually telling you this." There's to no negotiate. Two hands. There's no two ends. There's <laughs> I'm actually violence. telling you this yeah. to inform you. Yeah. However, I'm super uh, skilled interpersonally. I'm super skilled. Yeah. And I think a different person might have talk about not being current with yourself. Might have said, "Okay, fine. You know what? You're right. Let's let's continue. Let's try this. it some more." Mm-hmm. How do we help people to like, that's your, I mean, cause you're saying these things, like I'm just not finishing my plate. Like, and I'm like, oh my God, like for someone who doesn't have interpersonal skills or strong interpersonal skills to say to somebody, I don't eat sugar. It's not a negotiation. I just and don't eat sugar. You are right that it took, it took a while. I am strong and I do. Oh, yeah. I, think, I think I've developed a care for myself. That's higher than the care to not disappoint you, you being, you know, my mother. Oh, so my I, love for myself is greater than my need, my my care about disappointing you. That's a yeah. quotable. Yeah. Yeah. How do we and get so there? When, you do the work, you you work it slowly. You I used to hate myself. So I know it's a journey. And yeah. it's every sentence. Like I used to say really mean things and those felt like the fam- you know, the familiar yeah, that's what I am, a lazy blah, blah. Right. And now when I say those things, my body goes like, what? No, Me you're too. not. What are, what are you saying? I'm not even fighting it. I'm like, Me too. I'm like that is just not true. Stop that. Yeah, come that on. That is just right. not true, you know, period. Someone lied to me and for a while I believed it and now I don't, you know? I do believe that we all deserve, I start from the premise that we, we're we good, we're good eggs. You know, we, we're all trying hard. Like I don't think any parent, like even my incredibly dysfunctional family, they don't wake up in the morning saying like, oh, we're going to hurt this child. It's going to be great. You know, nobody tries to hurt other people. No, I and I think if that. you're sitting here listening to like a What You're Craving podcast, like you want to get well worse than most people I know. Like nobody even turns on like my podcast who isn't like, you know what? I want to elevate my way of living. Like I, I want to be better. And that is, that's what we have to nurture. That's how it starts. It starts with like, I want this thing. Now, if you have the um, the illusion that it's going to be overnight, maybe some people, some things you can heal overnight. But in the case of weight, for me, it was certainly a journey, you a know, relation, diff- yeah, a relation, your relationship, a relationship with food is transformed, right? And exactly. I think that was a really beautiful moment where you said, I got to just start putting love and things in my body. Let me start there. Yes. Yes. Because I think as a child, food might have been, and that's certainly known in the other side of the, you know, the spectrum where Right. I'm so controlled by these people. I'm going to be able to put what I want in my body is kind of the, it's the high. It's like, oh, you cannot control that. Like you okay. cannot control what goes in my body that way, which is for me, you know, the cigarettes, the sex, the food. It's like, it was all like what comes in here. Yep. I choose, I, right? I am deciding like, and yeah, right. And I don't care what you think of me, even though I really care what you think of me. Oh <laughs> God, did I care? Did I care? <laughs> and, <laughs> and now I care. I care. I, I mean, if we were to hang up this call and you were like, Sophie, you're an idiot. I hated this podcast. I'd be sad. I mean, I'm not, per- it's like, I, I don't want to not feel my feelings. You know, it's not about that, but I'd be like, 
tell me what happened. Like, how do we do this better? Like, did I do something, right. said something, but it, but it wouldn't be coming from a place of like, I am broken because Molly didn't like me. You know, right. it's a very And I think different... at the end, if, if we couldn't make terms, I would say, well, I guess that's her opinion. And I probably have to go talk to somebody about it personally. I'd probably have to go process it out and have someone else tell me, Hey, I mean, not everybody likes you, Molly. That's okay. Yeah. Or even, you know, you are going to disturb people because you speak your mind and you have done the journey where you're free to speak your stuff. And some people are going to be like, like, this is scaring me. Yeah. And so learning to, when people judge you or eliminate you or don't want you, it it really very rarely is about you. I know someone said to me a while ago when I had sort of my first encounter with, I said, you know, you're just going to have to be the villain in some people's story. And I don't know why it sat, but I was like, all right. That's okay. Yeah. It's not my story. And I, and I think what I was thinking about is that I think that I've done, and I, I think you're the same way. Like I've done the consistency of treating myself well. Yeah. And that's, I think what allows for me to, cause I was so sure that I shouldn't be doing this thing that I, I was not interested in. I, I put myself, yeah, I put myself before anybody's disappointment. I was like, no, we're not yeah. negotiating. This yeah. is a statement and I'm glad I didn't, you know, I was going to email and it you, is, but I called you. So see you later. That was already a courageous. Right. <laughs> I wanted to talk to you about it in our yeah. culture. We don't do those things anymore. That's what AA has taught me, you know, you sort of do it to the eyeball to eyeball. That's the best yeah. way to do things as close to eyeball and eyeball when you're having yeah. conversations of the heart. Yeah. And it's incredibly courageous because people will attempt to, judge you rope you back because there's a reason why you don't want to be with this person and maybe it's a matter of consciousness or difference of integrity whatever it is that reason is there for you to be able to take a stand and say yeah no that doesn't it's not it's not even a matter of i really that was another piece of the healing for me like i don't even need to have an opinion about why i'm doing it i love that exactly right? because i'm i mean i i had a hard time i mean i was very i was not listened to not for uh neglect neglect just like everyone was really busy had their own stuff going on and so that became my normative like well no one's listening to me so I'll get really fat I'll get really loud I'll get really drunk I'll get really all these things and I don't need to go do those things anymore in order for people to listen to me no I you just a- change you change and funny enough it's funny because I had an interaction with my mom who's profoundly narcissistic there's no question and so that means my needs are not important when you're raised by someone who really the world revolves completely in, into what she feels And again, she has her reasons to being that way. Like, I don't even judge that. But the other day she said something that was so incredibly kind, so incredibly kind. And I, it it had this like water in the desert, beautiful. And it it shouldn't be so rare, you know, that you fall from your chair when your mother says something kind, but there was something about it that was just like, oh, I moved my needle. I moved my internal needle that even in that narcissism, there's now room to love someone else. Like I've cracked, I've cracked that nut, you know, within myself. And so that was really, yeah. I mean, those are incredible teachers because learning to love yourself in the midst of the complexity of all that is a beautiful, what a beautiful journey. Like what a service. That is the other thing that when you were asking, like sometimes we look being the villain in someone else's story, the villain is always, is often the one that makes you the non, maybe the one that's witnessing the villainhood or the thing that you're judging as villain. That is what makes you say, no, I don't want that. Right. And that is how you, you know, the contrast of that is how you grow up too. So now that's I'm exactly almost like, right. I don't even look at it as a villain. I'm looking at it as like, I'm of service to them and I can take it. I can, I'm strong enough that you can say, get out of my life. And right. I could be like, wow, yeah. I, I guess it's better for them. Like they took a stand and that's good for them. Right. I love that's that. That's like the that's ultimate. A really beautiful way. Sort of that they're doing their own work. Yes. Lean into that. Don't take it so personally, like those yeah. four agreements, like don't take that personally yes. and go focus on something that's useful. I mean, I'm sure you've had many opportunities where five years later, 10 years later, people come back and be like, that conversation we had, yeah. wow. Even if at the time it looked like they, you know, pushed you away of sorts, but then that was the seed too, you know, and yep. it's just, it's just like, now I'm like, huh, either way, it's all good. I like I right. do my, my path. And sometimes I think, I love what you're saying, which is sometimes that's just them using their voice and you're in yes, that. And they try, if them. any, they trust you enough and they feel safe with you probably that they can even you know, like they're not going to go to their like worst villain. They're going to the one that they think is actually going to still love them or still accept, you know, them for their choice. And it's, 
Yeah, I, I just think it's such a beautiful, like who needs to go? I mean, I love people who travel. I, I don't have nothing with people who travel, but like travel in you, like mm. go visit these places, right? Like go to these towns inside of you that are like scared and excited and inspired and give up and don't give up and all of those. It's all, it's just like uh, visiting. I, it's like, I only like to have friends where I like, this is not even the surface of Sophie. <laughs> That's all I was just thinking is like, <laughs> we could talk for like, we could have an endless podcast of you being so wonderful. I just love when I get to talk to people who have so clearly done their own work. And just to remind everybody listening, you could do this. You can do your own work. Yes. That's what we've done. <clears throat> not easy. I have that moment. I sat on that ground when I decided to stop binging and harming myself with food. And I laid on the floor and screamed my guts up and then it was over. Yeah. Yeah. There is another side. And then and there's another over. episode where you scream again and it's like, Oh, there's that little visit. I didn't, yes. I love, <laughs> there's, I, there I have been episodes in the last decade or so where I've had those screaming episodes. Oh, but that then it's over, you know, that's a completing the feeling. And you know, it's over. That's the thing. It's like, you know, that it happened 10 years ago, five years ago, last week, and you still go, you know what? I am better for it. And I am clearer for, for it. And it's like, just, or maybe there, like you know, or maybe this idea of being of service. Like, I think you and I, both of our stories have really helped to heal people. Both of our bravery and our own coaching careers have been able to tolerate other people's stuff, see ourselves and others and help them to see that. It's a wonderful yeah. thing. What if everybody, I mean, I'm sure everybody listening is like, um, more Sophie, please. How do we, <laughs> how do we get, I mean, I am reevaluating my Sophiness in my life. But how can we know more about you? Where can we find you? Can we find you? Yes, you can. The usual suspects, I'm everywhere. The new website that I just started that I love is this 31 day. That is what got us to start this yeah, one, that's this right. conversation. It's a 31 day, every day, five minutes. Talk about Sophiness in your ear. Five minutes in the morning of, or at night, whenever you want to do it. But it's a, just a little snippet of like, hey, look at this. Look at this mm -hmm. little thing you're doing. And just like- I'm pretty sure into... I'm going to do it. <laughs> like I'm oh, going to sign up right after this podcast. Please, it's really fun. It's just like really, it, it is answering this question. Like, how do we do this? Well, we I'm do it one it. bite at a time. One. If anybody wants to do it with me, let me know. I'm definitely doing it. I would love that. And if you guys do it, I'd love to come and we can like have a conversation in right. like a, a weekend or whatever. Love I'd that. love to do that. Well, I'm definitely so, having you back on. So where do we find that particular? It's being-current.com. Being okay, that's in the show notes, everybody. Don't worry. You're adorable. You being are like one of my favorite. Well, my that's favorite. like how I always feel on a podcast. I'm like, wait, I need a pen. I'm in my car. It's like, don't worry. In the don't show worry, notes. We got you. We got it's you. all we in the show notes. Back. Yeah. Oh, this was one of my favorite conversations. Maybe I ever. love everything about you. I have since the most, we, um, I, I, this always happens to me. So I don't even listen to it, but I remember Linda, Silverson, who is, who hosted us. And she said, you're going to really love one of these women. And I was like, don't you tell me who I love Linda. And then I like, Sophie walked into dinner and sat uh, next to me and I was like, oh my God, I love you. She's, here it. she's it. Here we are. Yes. I want more of you too. So if we both want more of each other, I yeah, think we'll we work on that. Each other. Yeah. I have openings yeah. in my yeah. power circle and I'm getting you in now. I love you. Thank you for coming on the podcast. I love you. Thank again. you for having me. I love you. I love you. I love you.